everyone! I am super, super excited because the other day we got all of the new releases for August and oh my goodness, there are so many good ones. Kaysen has some favorites, Jasmine has some favorites, and my other daughter's at camp so she hasn't got to see them yet. So let's start with showing you the Lift and Look Woods book. There's another one in the series, it's called Lift and Look Garden and it sold out super, super fast. What we love about it is that it's a flat book, but all the flaps are built into the pages of the book, so you don't have to worry about your kids like ripping the flap off because they're super, super sturdy. So it's just this really cutely illustrated little story about all these guys. Oh, I didn't see that page before. Oh, that's so cute. What is that animal case? And do you know what that is? A mole. A mole. So super cute little naturey book. The next, Harry, you can put it back in the box, please. The next one we have is one of Kaysen's favorites. What is it? 199 books. And we love to do scavenger hunts with these things. Yes, we actually took the 199 things in nature book out and did a scavenger hunt the other day, which we could totally do with this book, too, because it is just filled with bugs. And since it's summertime and there are bugs everywhere. Kaysen, which bug do you think that you could find outside today? Um, one of those? Yeah, I, I, I just see one grass. Right did there. you? I hear Vegas has a few grasshoppers. Did you hear that in the news? Vegas is being overrun with grasshoppers. Anyways, we love, love, love this series. This is a brand new one I'm really excited about. I actually didn't realize how big it was going to be or thick. It's actually super big. Um, Osborne is really working hard this year on expanding the Poppy and Sam or the Farm Your Tales series. And they just came out with this brand new one, all about first words. So if you know Poppy and Sam, here's a little introduction of their family and who's all in the, in the stories. And then the book just kind of goes through and has all these words that you can introduce your kids to. And then you can find them all in the pictures. So it's really great. It's a hardcover. The illustrations are super nice. Just, it's so big. There's so, so many pages. Kaysen, what's the next one? Do, 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 do sound. So this one... I can't get over how gorgeous these illustrations are. And the sounds are even better. So there's a sound box in it. Batteries can be purchased at Dollarama. I know people are always worried about batteries dying, but it's not a big deal. These books always just have the most beautiful sound. So this is when a good they, one. When they say always... Nancy always wants a book. He always chooses the sound book. Does she? My niece really likes the sound book. What is the moon is the next one in our very first questions and answers series. And it's what? gorgeous and there's lots of questions. And it just talks about what is the moon and what shape is the moon and what's the moon made of. And has anyone been to the moon? What it's like on the moon? And then underneath all of these pictures, there's all these flaps filled with information. So lots of learning in these books, but flaps just make it so, so fun. Um. I was super, super excited about this book, and I read it to myself the other night. None of the kids are around, so I read it to myself, and it was super cute. Um, it's called Unicorns and Uniforms, and it's all about these unicorns that run this hotel. I'm going to read you a couple pages. It's opening day at the snazzy hotel. Lord Stork is due here. His stay must go well. And I love all the detail in the pictures. Um, look right here. The manager of the hotel's name is Miss Unicorn. How funny, hey? <laughs> so the Lord is coming. The staff all look fine in maroon uniforms with bright shiny buttons. Stand by, unicorns. The doorman salutes and points to the door, but he spins it too quickly. Lord Stork hits the floor. 
I'll carry your bag, sir, the porter declares. But he bumbles and fumbles, and they tumble downstairs. So it's just a really, really cute rhyming book. Um, and you'll have to buy it, I guess, if you want to hear how it ends. It's so good. Then we have this one. Lift the flap, nature. So it has over 80 flaps to lift. Um, there's counting, there's matching, there's tons of things to talk about. And we just like to do all the spotting in it. Here's a page that talks about all the different um, seasons. And you can peel back all the flaps to see what's behind it. So what happens in the summer and what happens in the spring? Here's some cows and the animals are eating the long grass. It just talks about how things change throughout the seasons. Here's some baby animals, so you have to match them to their mom. So if you can find the other duck, which is sitting here in the pond, and then there they are together. So super fun. We love this series. Kaysen really, really loves this series too. Pussycat, Pussycat, where have you been? It's based on the, you know, the very well-known rhyme. But this Pussycat goes on all of these different adventures. We have he goes to Rome, he goes to New York, he goes to Italy, Paris, he goes to Paris, and now he's going to, to Washington. Washington. Did I imagine that he's he's gone to Italy? Did I make that up? I don't know for sure. So, Pussycat, Pussycat, where have you been? I've been to Washington, and guess what I've seen? The city is full of great places to roam. I began at the White House, the President's home. Inside the West Wing, decisions are made. The president works there with help from top aides. The Grand Oval Office is named for its shape. It's the president's office where meetings take place. So it's just like this super cute um, rhyming book all about all of the different historic places that you can visit in Washington. Yeah, it's really cool, this book. Then we have my first outdoor book. So this book has thin cardboard pages so you don't have to worry about your kiddos wrecking it and it's just all about the outdoors and what you can see out there there's sun and wind bugs and slugs beach combing rainy days it's so big trees and leaves there's all sorts of different pages lots of things to talk about clouds and birds and flowers and all sorts of everything that happens outdoors what is that weird noise that you keep making are you a crane or something? Yeah, that's his truck sound. Lift the flap, bugs and butterflies. Shh. What makes bees dance? Which butterflies eat rotting meat? How do bugs find their way at night? Which tiny bugs can build nests taller than a person? Lift the flaps to find out the answers. And lots more of a fascinating world of bugs and butterflies. So this kind of goes with his 199 bugs book. There's just tons and tons of flaps and information to learn about. So if you, I'm not sure if you can see the flaps through the picture, but I have an extra long tail. Swallowtail butterflies can lose their trailing parts of their wings without getting hurt. I think that bird just snipped off one of his tails. Really? Yeah. So super cool book. Sorry, Jazz, I keep bonking you in the head with books. <laughs> I have to say, I this was this is one that I'm really, really, really excited about. Mental health is something I'm super passionate about. Um, talking about your feelings, talking about um, your emotions, and how to deal with things. And I'm really excited that Usborne came out with this book. It's from the series that they also have all about families, where they're talking about how families are different and it's okay. And this one is just talking about emotions. Um, we. We do have a few books um, about mental health, and I'm glad to see that they're coming out with more. So here's a look at the table of contents. Maybe I'll just read it to you. I'll tell you each of the different pages. So everyone has feelings, body messages, and clues. So it's nice because you can look at the pictures and just try to figure out um, by looking at people how they're feeling. How are you feeling? Heavy gray cloud. Oh. I feel like there's a heavy gray cloud above my head. So then it just talks about ways like why you feel that way and making like 
not excuses, but um, reasons how you could feel a certain way and why. It's just great. I think it's so, so important to be able to talk to your kids about how they're feeling and how to deal with those feelings. This book is absolutely stunning, and I don't know if you can see how beautiful and sparkly it is, but it's all about the moon. Welcome to the story of our moon, a story of moon dust and moon rabbits, cheese and astronauts, deep thoughts and bold plans. Read, dream, wonder. It's so big. And what I love about this one is that the illustrations, like the paper is different. It's like a, a glossy, soft kind of paper, but the illustrations are just what gorgeous. What the heck? Yeah, isn't it different? Yeah. Um, and it's just filled with all sorts of stuff all about the moon. Okay, Case, and it's your turn to talk about two of your favorite things in the whole world. Lift them up and tell them. So the first one I can't choose are these are sticker books. And I only like boy who use those stickers, so the first one I'm going to show you is one of those stickers from a store that has so many stickers. Stickers are reusable. Yep, two. That means you can move them out, or move them around wherever you want. Maybe you should show them what the stickers look like. And so here's all these empty scenes, um, and then... Here's and all the stickers. And then here's some of the stickers. And you can move them around and put them on any pages you really want. It does tell you, it does suggest what pages they should go on. But it doesn't matter too much. Plus you can move them around. So, dinosaurs and also... These stickers are also reusable. Here are the stickers, but it's called Diggers and Cleans. Yeah, so over 200 reusable stickers. Look how fun those are. Um, did you hear what he said before? He only likes boy sticker books because we have a lot of like princess and ballerinas and fairies and unicorns. <laughs> and so he's been waiting and waiting for something that's not super girly in his opinion. So here we go. Dinosaurs and diggers and cranes. Now Jaslyn's going to show you um, one of her most favorite things on the planet, which is um, magic painting. This one is new. It's the Poppy and Sam. Like Mom said earlier, this year Osborne's trying to make more Poppy and Sam stuff. So they made the Poppy and Sam magic painting book, which I'm really excited to try. So if you don't know how magic painting works, there's a, a paintbrush here, and you dip it in water, and you and you just paint. And then it, the color's like built in, so it just kind of appears on the page. You have, like, this is just a really fun hobby that I like, and I put a lot of time into my pages. So something else to note about this is that, like all books in the Farm Your Tale series, there's a little yellow duck to spot on every page. There is? There definitely is. And, uh, let's see. I'm not sure. I see it. Where do you see it? Can you see it? down in the corner. I see it still. I'm waiting on it. <laughs> it's right there. There it is. So on every it's, page. Yeah, and it's near that bird. I didn't even know. Super, super excited about, about this. Um, magic painting books are some of our favorites. Okay, what's next? Um, I'm talking about the one. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well here's a little transfer book of pirates. So the little transfer books, I don't really do much of them, but I'd like to, so maybe this will be my first time. So what you do is it comes with transfers at the start, and then so to transfer it on, you, you stick your, let's say if you wanted to do this guy, you would stick him anywhere, and then you'd take like a pencil and you'd like rub him rub the sticker on, and then it would transfer over to the page forever. Kind of like stickers, but not. We have lots of these actually for adults, too, with, like, bugs and butterflies and all sorts of things like that. So there's pirates and knights. Then we have a brand new nature activity book. So it says it's a write-in nature activity book. It's packed full of all kinds of nature-themed puzzles, from a rock pool word search to a prairie yeah. dog burrow maze with fascinating facts on every page. 
find out about an incredible variety of plants and animals along the way. Um, yeah, and our kids, our kids, our kids, my kids, him and his sisters really, really, really love activity books. I've noticed that there's been a lot of nature books coming out this um this time, which which is good, which is cool. Okay, show them that one. This one? Yeah. See, another nature one. Never get bored outdoors. It's like the Never Get Bored book, but just outdoors with more activities geared toward outdoors. So I'll show you. Like um, hundreds of activities. It's crazy. Let's see. Make art outdoors. Be inspired by the great outdoors and create wild, wonderful works of art. And it gives you examples of what arts you can make. Like the, oh, no, I'm on the wrong page. Um, you can make beachy heads or like any of those. It's really cool. And the pic and the pictures are cool. So it has craft ideas. It has game ideas. It has writing ideas. Um, making paper planes and helicopters. So hours and hours of fun to be had with this one. I'm excited to use it. We also have a nature journal, or not a nature journal, a holiday journal. Um, we actually do, I'm pretty sure, have a, a nature a nature one. So um, lots of blank sheets, and it's just holiday themed, where you can just write all your memories from your holidays or your trips. And then we have a few more left to show you. This one is from the Young Reading Series 3. I've been waiting. This has been in the catalog forever, and we just finally are getting it. So there's lots of really great pictures in it or illustrations in it. And I'll read you the back. Um, could it ever be possible to turn yourself invisible? What would it feel like? What could you get away with? In this suspenseful retelling of H.G. Wells' dark tale, readers can join the hunt for the world's first invisible man. We're definitely going to be reading that one. The next one is A Boy Called Hope. Um, it's the same author who wrote The Boy Who Sailed the Ocean in an armchair, which I started reading. Um, do you want me to read the back of it? Sure. There's a few pictures, by the way. So it says, I'm Dan, and I... And I'm Dan Hope, and deep inside my head, I keep a list of things I want to come true. For example, I want my sister, Ninja Grace, to go to university at the North Pole and only come back once a year. I want to help Sherlock Holmes solve his most daring mystery yet. And if it could be a zombie mystery, all the more exciting. I want my dog to stop eating all the planets and throwing them up on the carpet. And finally, the biggest of all, I want my dad to love me. Yeah, so I think that'll be a really good book. I actually really like this author. She also, I'm pretty sure, is the author of A Place Called Perfect, right? Maybe. I can't remember. Um, definitely wrote The Boy Who Sailed the Ocean in an Armchair, so there's not really very many pictures of it. It's just Well, on words, some words, page, you could find a little doodle or something. And then we have one more thing to show you, a brand new series called... This is the first book. I don't think you're right, but the, it doesn't matter. Oh, well... Just anyway, um, you could be right. I don't know. I looked on the website last night. Now I can't remember. But it's called Knitbone Pepper Ghost Dog. And there's, hold them up. There's four books in this series so far. And uh, I'll read you this one. Knitbone Pepper and his ghostly animal friends are thrilled when a vintage plane lands at Starcross Hall, bringing with him Martin the Hamster's beloved ghostly owner. But this visitor is a human ghost. And that means only one thing, mischief. So, I, oh, right, this was the one that has some pictures. <laughs> um, there's also, I really like the colors on the covers. I like this one especially. How they make it. What are the titles called? Um, meat, Knit Bone Pepper. No, not, no, no, just uh, A Horse Called Moon. Oh, oops. So right. that one was a silver phantom. This is a horse called Moon. This is the last circus tiger. This one is best friends forever. Super cool. Jasmine was actually talking about making herself a little book club with those. Because there's four books and that's enough to make a book club. <laughs> yeah. So I apologize that this video went so, so long. Um, but there are so many good things to show you. So I hope you fall in love with these as much as we do. Please, please, please comment below and tell me what your favorite ones are. That's it. Have a great day, everyone. Say bye, Kason. Bye, guys. Bye.